So we all know about the challenges of innovation. This is where the entrepreneurial spirit in the valley here really plays off, which is what I refer to as addressing the innovation gap. There is an insatiable desire for new ideas, and there is a fundamental lack of supply. There's lots of ideas, not a lot of good ideas, right? And so, the, and that's where the entrepreneurial <laughs> spirit really wins, is to fill in that innovation gap that exists. Now, the challenge is, is once you've got the gap, it's the delay from the time you have the idea until you can get that idea in, impact into the marketplace. So that's what we refer to as the innovation delay. So the question is, is how, do you, how, do you, how do you address the innovation gap, and how do you impact the innovation delay? Now, from a perspective of a large company like HP, we actually procure a lot of our ideas from entrepreneurs and, and, and startup inventors. Why? Because if you look, if you go back and you just look at the patent history of just the U.S. issued patents, and you look at the top patents, the patents that are identified as being the most fundamental patents out there, meaning that they're, they're referred to as being fundamental science that other patents are built off of, they are eight times more likely to come from a small and medium-sized business. Not from a large corporation like HP. They are more likely to come from a startup than they are to come from a large company. Startups are what feed the innovation you know, in, the, in the US and in other countries around the world. And part of actually one of the challenges that we all deal with right, is how do we address the regulatory and governmental control issues to actually encourage entrepreneurship because that becomes the catalyst for, for the new ideas that get generated. And then the innovation delay, so access to capital, access to people, and a, a customer base that's willing to try new and interesting things. Now I'm a big believer in fundamentally what I refer to as creativity is not a gift. Some people out there believe that, you know, you're creative, I'm not, because God has bestowed a gift on you and I haven't been bestowed the gift. But well, the reality is, is everybody is creative. Now part of our challenge is, is in some cases, that creativity has been beat out of us over the years. So the example is, is that we are all creative creatures. Now, why a picture of a toilet paper roll? Well, in my case, my kids are all grown and gone. Actually, my youngest is a senior at Cal State Fullerton, but my daughters are married. But when they were little, little kids can go grab an empty toilet paper roll and they can invent 500 ideas of what that toilet paper roll is. A baseball bat, a periscope, a ball to throw, right? Why? Because they don't understand conformity, right? They don't care that, anybody, that the parents are all giggling and think they're cute. They're just using their, their natural curiosity to go create. Over time, we get trained about this whole concept of conformity, right? If you think about it from a classroom perspective, go into a kindergarten class and ask how many kids want to be musicians and artists and inventors. Ooh, you know, every kid raises their hand. Now, ask that same question every year through being a senior in high school. And how many want to be, how many would classify themselves as being highly creative? Maybe one, because it's not they're, they're, they've learned over the years of our educational systems on how to conform. Now the other point is, is the educational system actually teaches to taking, you know, we, we graduate people who know how to take tests. What we don't graduate today is people who know how to provide, who to bring creative thinking processes to solve problems. You know, in fact, I was at an event um, with some uh, government officials and I shared the fact that what we graduated, what we are graduating today are not the, not the, the skill sets that we need to win in what I refer to as this creative economy. We're coming from an industrial economy to a knowledge, knowledge information economy to a creative economy. And we need a different skill set of students coming out of the educational system to win in the creative economy. And it's also not only how do we provide creative thinking? It's not just like reading, writing, arithmetic, creativity is a new subject. It's how do you bring creativity across reading, writing, and arithmetic. 
And how do you teach that appropriately to ki all the way from kindergarten through college? And how do you make it as a fundamental skill set? Because it's no longer about what you can do with your physical hands or what you can do in a factory. It's the ideas that we can generate. Right? Countries that understand that you're either going to be a creator or you're going to be a producer. There's a lot more value created on the creator side than being on the producer side. And countries that get it are going to, are going to, are going to, are going to reap the rewards. Stupid wins. Right? One of the things I, I've learned over the years is, is that when we are running a session where we're trying to come up with new product ideas, it typically is the most stupid idea that ultimately ends up being the winning project. In fact, one of the exercises that we do is, is we'll come up with a list of ideas. Right? Then we'll have people rank the ideas. And the one idea that kind of gets flagged as being kind of the real weird one, the stupid one, I erase every other one off the list. We take the stupid idea, we move it to the middle, and we say, okay, now how do we make that into a product? So you challenge you know, the conventional thinking to get outside the norm. So stupid wins. The other challenge is <laughs> suspend disbelief. This is kind of the, the, the mantra inside of HP is how do you suspend disbelief, right? We've all heard it. Not enough return on investment. Oh, that's a famous one inside of HP and from the VCs. It's not a new concept. We tried that before. Don't waste your time. I'm the expert. I'll tell you that it won't work, so don't bother wasting your time. 